All right, now for the second half of your notes, uh, you're gonna be learning some new stuff here. You're not, and you're still gonna be using Sokotoa, just not as much. Um, here we're talking about surveying, navigation, and bearings. Bearings are used, uh, basically if you're an airline pilot, or maybe if you're on a boat. Yeah, like if you're on a boat. Um, so, that's what bearings are for. Have you ever seen that video? I'm not recommending it because there's bad language, but it's pretty funny. So, um, anyway, for example, if we're talking about bearings here, if you're talking about south 38 east, that what that means is you're going 35 degrees southeast, right? Well, it actually means that you're going 35 degrees east of south. So, whenever you measure, take these measurements, these bearing measurements are always taken from the vertical. Okay, so we're not going from zero degrees on our circle anymore. They're always taken from the vertical axis. And so if we're looking at <coughs> um, 35 degrees east of south, that means that 35 degrees, well, if this is south, and if you had 35 degrees to the east, this is your angle down here. It is not coming from the horizontal axis. If you're talking about north 80 degrees west, that is 80 degrees west of north. So you kind of read it backwards, but that is taken from the vertical. So you're going to go from the north and you're going to go 80 degrees west. If we're talking about north 45 degrees east, then you're going to talk about 45 degrees east of north. So you're measuring from, once again, the vertical. Notice how your arrows are drawn here. This will make a big difference. Uh, because if you were to draw some of these uh, some of these triangles from the wrong axis, okay, you're never going from the horizontal axis here, then you won't get the rest of the problem. So if we look at example five here, uh, this is a tough problem because we have a lot to think about here. Um, we're going to draw some pictures, which is always a good time, um, and we're also going to be dealing with some vectors. So if you've had vectors in physics, this could be right up your alley. Um, a sailboat leaves a pier and heads due west at 8 knots. And then after 15 minutes, the sailboat tacks, which means it changes course, to 16 degrees northwest at 10 knots. So find the sailboat's bearing and distance from the pier after 12 minutes. So if they were traveling at 8 knots, that's nautical miles per hour. So if we start at the pier, let's call this, well, this is the pier right here. So this will be our, our P. It first travels due west, so that means it's heading exactly straight west at eight knots. So we're gonna draw a little picture here. <coughs> and let's draw a nice horizontal line going from here over. So there's a horizontal line. And it headed west at eight knots. Now we're not gonna put an eight down here, but we are gonna have to put some number. Um, we have the direction correctly, but we also, whenever we're talking about vectors, we're talking about magnitude and direction. So, um, what we have is at 8 knots. Well, it only traveled 8 knots for 15 minutes. So, if this is 8 knots per hour, then we need to convert... Um, 15 minutes into hours. So we would say, um, actually, if you talk about 15 minutes here, we're talking about this boat actually only traveled a total of two knots. So that would be only two nautical miles of travel in 15 minutes. So if it travels eight knots an hour, after 15 minutes, that's one fourth of an hour, you just take eight divided by four and you get two. So that is your vector direction and the magnitude of that vector. Now at this point, the boat changed course and started going northwest. So if we go northwest, we're gonna be traveling at the end of this vector here and you're gonna be heading northwest 16 degrees. So we're going this direction. Now the boat was traveling a little bit faster and it wants to know after 12 minutes, how far had it gone? Well, if you take if you think about it, if it's going 10 knots an hour, after 12 minutes, that's one fifth of an hour. So if you take 10 divided by five, that will once again give you, it only traveled 
two nautical miles. So what we want to figure out is what is the final distance this boat traveled from the pier. So we want to know what is this distance right here. This would be our x <coughs> or our d, whatever you want to call it. So we need to put these into vectors. Um, the first thing, if we're talking about your first uh, direction when it was going west, we're going to set this up into a table, and then we're also talking about 16 degrees northwest, so that's going to be 16 degrees here. And let's figure out how we can write this up. So we're going to make a table. Uh, basically what this has done, this boat's done, is it's traveled on two vectors, and we're trying to find, add those up and get the third vector. So we're going to make a table. So let's see, we got this, and we're going to say we have our vector here, and we'll call this vector v1, this vector going up northwest, v2, and then this final vector, well this is just going to end up being v1 plus v2. So we're going to have to write out a couple different equations for each of these vectors. So for, for our first vector, um, this is traveling in the direction, now we have to use our circle, it's traveling in the direction of 180 degrees and it traveled for a distance of 2. So we are going to take 2 times, now if we're talking about the uh, direction, if we're talking about um, sines and cosines here, well, this is going in the direction, if we're talking about x, we're talking about the cosine value. So since this is traveling, we have to talk about the x and the y value of this vector. So their x value is a 2 cosine, and it's going in the direction of 180 degrees. So if you take 2 times the cosine of 180, that's going to give you a negative 2. Now if we talk about our y value, um, we should know that if we're going horizontal to the left, that's not going to have a y value. If you go horizontally to the left, you're going to have a 2, and the y is the sine of 180 degrees. So that would end up being oh, 2 times 0, which is 0. Now we got to do the second vector, the vector that's going in a different direction. So our v2. Here we're still going to be talking about our x and y values, so we still have to use cosine for, for the x and we still have to use sine for the y values. So the difference is we have to figure out what our total angle was. So here we are using our triangle. And if you go 16 degrees north of west, that's measured from the vertical to the vector. Well, if we talk about the entire angle here, this is 90 plus 16, which gives us a total of 106 degrees. So what we're going to have to plug in for our V2 is we're going to have to say this is a 2 times the cosine, which I want a different color here. This is going to be 2 times the cosine of 106 degrees. So we're not using 16 degrees, we're using 106. So this is where we're going to need your calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degrees and this ends up becoming a negative 0.55. Both of these x values should be negative because if you think about it, aren't you going to the left and you're still going to the left here, which means that you're going to have um, some negative, uh, negative values. So if you're thinking about your x from your origin. Uh, now let's do our y. So we're going to do 2 times the sine of 106 degrees which is about a 1.92. So next thing we're going to talk about is we need to add these two vectors together. We're going to come up with our v1 and plus v2 because we need, that's what we get for our x value. So v1 plus v2, all you do is add a negative 2 plus a negative 0.55, so you get a negative 2.55, and then you have 0 plus 1.92, and you get that distance.
Now, if we're trying to find the length of this vector, then we are looking at using our distance formula. So we're going to have to say the length of v1 plus v2 And when we do that, we're actually going to be taking the square root of our x value, and we're going to square that, plus the square root of our y squared value. So once we plug these into our formula, we're going to say this is the square root of negative 2.55 squared plus 1.92 squared this will give us a total of 2 or 3.2 miles. That, my friends, is how far away your boat is. So let's recap here real fast. Um, you start off with drawing a picture, and when you draw your arrows, your vectors, you have to label how far they've gone. Well, this is your magnitude, okay? This two and this two is your magnitude. So we originally traveled eight knots going west, but we only traveled that speed for 15 minutes. That means they only went two nautical miles. Then we traveled 16 degrees northwest, so you take 16 from the north, that's why this line is drawn here, and we traveled at 10 knots, but only for 12 minutes. So 12 minutes is one-fifth of an hour, which means one-fifth of 10 knots is a two right here. <coughs> the total distance, if you, they call it as a bird flies, um, from the pier to the end of where the boat is, that is adding vector one plus your vector two. So when we add these together, we set up a table. You have to set up a row for V1, you have to set up a row for V2, a column for X, and a column for Y. And your third row is going to be V1 plus V2. So if you're talking about your X values, you have to include the cosine. Okay, you have to use the cosine when you're trying to find the the x values, and then when you're trying to find the y values, you use the sine, because so the sine goes with y. And use your magnitude times whatever direction you are heading. So when you're going west, we're heading at 180 degrees. Just so take two cosine 180, two sine of 180, you get negative two and a zero. And if you are heading 16 degrees north of west, you have to take 90 degrees plus 16, which gives you 106 degrees. So for the x value, say two cosine of 106, y is 2 sine of 106, get negative 0.55 and a 1.92, add those up to get your red vector here, and then in order to find the length, you have to take the square root of negative 2.55 and a 1.92. So that is your answer of 3.2 miles. Now confusing, I'm sure. Yes, it is. Um, so let's look at example 5b. 5b is actually example 5 on page 328 in your book. So you can fill it in using that or I will also go over it in class next time. So don't forget... Oh, I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat.